coming up next on the Wet Fly Swing podcast. But I, I didn't, I wasn't afraid of that maybe they would attack because I knew that we would beat them. It's it's in our blood that, the, and also the Russians, they are more afraid of Finns, I think. If if they could, they would, you know, even before, because, you know, like, for example, the Putin thinks that, you know, I need to take over Estonia, Finland, uh, Ukraine. They are my countries, but they know that because we have the biggest, uh, I think in Finland, we have the biggest military in Europe. That was Yanni with his take on Russia and Vladimir Putin. Streamers, drift boats, caddis dries, and Russia's impact on European freedom. Today on The Swing. Welcome to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show, where you discover tips, tricks, and tools from the leading names in fly fishing today. Hey, how you doing today? Thanks for stopping by the show. We've got a big push right now for Instagram. If you are on Instagram, you haven't checked us out, at Wet Fly Swing. You can do that right now and uh, and follow us there. And you can actually submit a question. This is our push for the Q&A uh, segment for our next guest right now. That's wetflyswing.com slash QA. We'll get you to the right place. Before we get rolling here today, let's hear from our sponsor. Bear Vault has the perfect solution to keep your provision secure while heading into the backcountry this season. Bear Vault builds a rugged polycarbonate locking canister that keeps bears and other wild animals away from your food. Proper food storage is one key to an epic trip in the backcountry. Please head over to wetflyswing.com slash bear vault to check out this must have solution for the outdoors now. You support this podcast and your safety this season by clicking through that link right now. Yanni is here to take us into uh, Finland and fly fishing and the amazing options and resources for your next trip there. We find out who the other European lodges that runs drift boats. We get a feel for uh, this lodge and the restaurant that's literally above the river, in the river. It's on the river. You got to check this out. This is a pretty cool deal, uh, what they share. And uh, we get some insight into the European Hall of Fame as well. Everything Finland today. Let's find out how to plan that next European vacation. Here we go. Yanni from Kapinkoski.com. How's it going, Yanni? Perfectly. I'm happy to be with you here. I'm pretty long away from you at the moment, but it seems it's feel we close each other. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah, we're a little ways. If I was to take a plane from where I am and fly over to Finland right now, I'm not even sure how long it would take, but it. it uh, I'm sure it's probably not as bad as it seems maybe, right? No, it's not bad. I don't know where you are, but uh, like from JFK, it's seven hour flight, so it's not bad. Yeah, seven hour. That's it. Cool. Well, we're gonna dig into fly fishing Finland and uh, and what you have going. You have a cool lodge out there. You got I got some cool questions because yeah, you know, this lodge is really interesting. It's like right on. I mean, it looks like it's like almost in the water, right? And you got this thing going, and you have this, um, and you have drift boats. I think that maybe that's where it got started. You were, I think, we're listening to an episode we had. Um, we were talking about the uh, the Norway episode, and our guest there had mentioned like, "Hey, we got these drift boats." Yeah, right. Yeah, we made it sound like we were the only the only place in Europe or you know in that part of the world with uh, with drift boats. But you, uh, you use drift boats as well. It looks like Willie's boats is what you have there. So, so I want to get into all this. This is great stuff. Brown trout fishing, everything there. Before we get there, let's take it back real quick into fly fishing. How did you first get into this, and then how did you bring it into a lodge? Like into the fly fishing or into the guiding. Yeah, yeah, like just start day one fly fishing. What was your first memory of fly fishing? Day one, I think it's as I'm I'm born in the seventies, so seventy five I'm born. Oh wow, what's your birthday? Fifth of August, seventy five. Okay, I got you a little bit. I'm a January of uh, seventy five, so we're pretty close. Okay, so so probably I think many many guys at the U.S. and girls as well might get excited about fly fishing. I think it was nineteen ninety two. Uh, Robert uh, Redford, you know the the river of it. Oh yeah, yeah, that was that for me. And before that, I I had dry with fly rods, and also I I did uh, trout fishing a lot when I was a teenager, but with the spinning rod. But when I saw that film, it was like uh, I was hooked. I I watched the film maybe like till this day. I I saw that maybe fifty times. Yeah, it's still a great film, isn't it? I mean, I can watch it today and still enjoy the movie, right? It's it's great movie, and the book is great. I I read the book in English. I read the book in Finnish a few times, both. <laughs> so it's it's uh, that's the main reason I'm a fly fisherman at the moment. That's it. 
That's that's amazing. And it's we've heard that story many times on this, you know, the impact. And I remember it when it happened because my dad had a fly shop and things just boomed. Like it was like all oh my all these people, new people came in and everybody was loving it. And yeah, I still have a goal to get Robert, you know, you get more of the team, right? Get Robert on the podcast. That'd be amazing if I could do that. That would be fantastic. So this is good. So you got in in the 90s and now, I mean, so how do you bring it to this lodge? Tell that story. You have this cool place up there. How did you find yourself owning, running a lodge there? Well, that that's also like a long way. I, I started guiding like uh, 2001, 2002. Uh, I, actually, I went to guiding school for a year in 99. So basically, I started my business in 2001. And then I, I started this operation in central Finland, like Lakeland, Finland what we now call Droughtland Finland also. And uh, I did that and I was doing the guiding at the same place where we have this lodge at the moment. I wasn't owning the lodge. I owned this one-man company and uh, I did the guiding for uh, there more than 10 years. But like 2003, we went to BC, Canada and we saw those three roads. And then, you know, it took one year around that we, we could... Like it was an easy process to yeah. to buy drift boat from Oregon to to central Finland, so we bought those drift boats, uh, Mackenzie style uh, from Willy boats. We bought those like it's it's nearly twenty years ago and blah blah blah. There's a long run from that day till this day, like five years ago. Or so the the previous owner of this this lodge we have now, he phoned me. I haven't told the guy like in maybe two three years at all. I didn't do guiding at that time for him anymore and I was doing other things and all of a sudden he phoned me like in tune that hi how are you doing he was like very Finnish kind of dude he he doesn't speak a lot he's very loud he is like mm, can you do you want to mm, come uh, maybe uh, take your daughter and blah 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 like he was like what now this sounds strange <laughs> and so I, I went to the place and of course it's because I, I haven't been fishing there also maybe in two, three years. And it, it was like, like a, like a comeback, cool comeback. It's only half an hour from my, from my house. So it's not far. So I went there with my daughter. She loves to fly fishing as well. She's now 16. She's not fly fishing at that much anymore because she's a teenager. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> so I went there and he, he's not a salesman. He's uh like around Selendi at the moment, and he's very, very, very Finnish countryside man who doesn't speak much. And he offered me a cup of coffee, didn't say anything, maybe said hi, go fishing or something. And then we drank the coffee, and he said, mm, I have been thinking with my wife that you and Titta, my wife, you and Titta, you will buy this place. Huh. I'm like, no, 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 no. Wow. <laughs> I know this business. This is not good business. No, 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 no. <laughs> and then yeah, you are the only one who can run this. Good sales pick. <laughs> yeah. He's a, good, he's a good salesman. He's a good salesman. Yeah. Oh, he's a good salesman. He knows that, you know, where the block. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. So, so he knew. Yeah, he knew that I might be interesting. And he said, okay, you can, you're the only one who can take care of that. That nobody knows. And I, I told him, there's no way, no, that they want, and that I know too well how this works, and it's it's hard work and little money. Yeah. What's the deal with that in Finley? Because I know, I mean, I just know just in general fly fishing or in this, you know, in the U.S. is not easy. It's a small niche. Is that, I mean, what is it in Finland? Is that the same thing, why it's challenging to own a lodge? Well, if it's five and a half million people living in Finland, we have, a, I would say, between 50,000 or 100,000 Fly fishermen, of course. We have uh, the fishing is also, you know, fishing generally, the, the sport fishing is the number one recreation hobby in Finland. We have like uh, nearly two million Finnish people fishing somehow every year. Oh, wow. So it's fishing is big in Finland. We have, uh, we have a lot of lakes, we have a lot of rivers, and it's like uh, it's big. But you have to also know that the trout fishing season, it starts like in like Troutland region, this central Finland region here, it starts like uh, April or May, depending on the place, and it ends like end of August. So it's basically, it's like three, three and a half month season. And also sometimes you have to close the rivers because of the heat wave. So basically, oh, it's, right. you have to make the money in three months. So it's it's busy season and it's hard work and 
and you have to be at the top for these three months. And also, it's it's besides the fishing season, you have to you have to have, you know, before and after the fishing season. There's you have to create the money from somehow. So you have these weddings and uh, funerals. Yeah, and both and the other stuff you have, like I noticed on your website, you've got like um, kind of the whatever it's called, river boating, even whitewater. You have whitewater there, right? Yeah, yeah. And also, that's very interesting thing about Central Finland fishing is it's whitewater. But I will tell, I will tell this a little bit more for you later. But yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah, we have rafting, different rafting sports, and and so on and so on. But still, it's not, it's not, uh, it's not the Hilton, <laughs> so to speak. And that's great. That's great. That's what we love. I mean, I think that some people love the Hilton and whatever, you know, but I think doing the rustic thing is really amazing too, you know, and I think that that's what I love. I love like looking at your place looks really cool because like I said, you got one of the cabins, you know, it's right on the, maybe talk about that. So you have this wooden structure, looks like a cabin and then it's protected. There's a boulder weir out there protecting it from the high water. Talk about that thing. Is that something, is that the main building or are there other buildings around there? Well, that's not the main building. That's the old mill. Okay. That's a very old mill, but we do have, uh, we serve food there and we have uh, like weddings there. We like last fall, we have few nights that the band was like playing live music there. Oh, wow. It's like a party place. So, and dining place. And also there is a, there's a downstairs. There's a, we have, we call that like a VIP dining place that you can have like six to eight persons there and you can enjoy your dinner or lunch or breakfast, whatever you want, but you can, it's, you are basically into the water. You are the worries. You can touch the, you know, the river at the same time, your, your meal. And so that's something that we don't, we don't serve uh, for everyone. We are saving that for like our favorite clients, <laughs> so to speak. And yeah. 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 A VIP. I like it. I like it. That's the VIP. That's awesome. And, and that, that, uh, Stones you see from the pictures or all these videos, it's a uh, they built that like ten years ago because we we were almost about to lose the mill because the heavy spring flood, but it generated uh, maybe the best drought spot in Finland because between that uh, stone wall or how you call it and the mill, it's the perfect place for for trout to spawn and trout to lay on and so it's like uh, I would call that like. Uh, Troutland. Yeah, that's the Troutland. <laughs> so you can literally, you can literally have a VIP opportunity, eat your dinner, touch the water, hang out right there, and then hop out with your fly rod and catch a giant brown trout. Yeah, that's the. I would always say to the people, if if it's been untouched for like twelve hours or one day, and I, I have a new client who is coming coming to fish the area, I said, okay, are you like, uh, how eager you are to hook the fish? Well, I promise you, if you if you are not in over casting, like as too far, press to do too much back backboards and, and you can hold your hold your shit, so to speak. You know, and that then then I guarantee that in ten minutes you will hook a trout there. Maybe even on your first cast. It's wow. it's the, it's very good. It's always because there's always enough uh, air like oxygen for the trout and a lot of stones and and they tend to also spawn there and it's uh very few people know that <laughs> yeah it's nice to have that's like your home like you're you know somebody arrives it's always nice to have like a home stretch to be like hey we're gonna go you know give you a bonus you know evening but here's your bonus evening and then you know what i mean they're getting more value than they expected yeah and some, sometimes i do like what we do with those drift boats that uh, it's like only like a Less than two mile stretch that we are going down. It's not like in, in BC or in or this US North States. It's different because I know the, the thing what you're doing there, but we are doing this only like short short stretch, like less than two miles. Sure. So if if the client won't hook any fish during the these three, four hours we spending on the water, usually they will. <laughs> but but sometimes it's it's tough, even especially when the heat wave is on yeah. or the flood is high. And I said, okay, after we we get down, we go to the shore, and I will take you to this place, and we you'll set your day. That's cool. That's cool. Well, and you mentioned the boats. I, I love that, and everybody knows I'm a drift boat kind of. Uh, I don't know what the word is, kind of fanatic. But 
How'd you get the Willys? Because I'm actually right now in Oregon as well. I know Willys well, and there's a bunch of boats out here. But there's boats all over the Western U.S. How did you come to choose Willys to get that boat? I don't even remember. I think because we we wanted to have aluminum ones. Oh, you did. So you wanted aluminum because you thought it was going to be kind of what more, more. Uh, yeah, we are very rock universe. Lots of rock. A lot of rocks. Yeah, and and hard, hard. Uh, they are hard. They are not easy rivers. So. So because because of that the structure of our rivers, we thought that we need uh, we need a metal boat. Yeah, and also we wanted them to last forever. They they seem to last forever. Yeah. Have you banged any? Have you been down? Have you put any uh, dents in the chine in the boat at all? Have you hit any rocks? Yeah, we hit the rocks, but it's like they still look like a new. The boat, okay, you know the guide's bench. They they broke down like five years ago, but that's that's maybe and also the oars. I lost two oars, and I tried to, actually, I tried to order new oars from Willy Boat, but they said that they won't ship. Oh, you know you should get? You should check in with uh, Sawyer oars. Okay. Because they're probably the best, well, I mean, they're the oars I use, so I have the square tops. I mean, they're uh, they're awesome, and I'm sure that they're probably able to ship anywhere. Yeah, I will, I will write it down immediately. Yep, Sawyer oars, they're awesome, and... Um, Good. So, so you got that going, you got the drift boat. So let, let's bring it into, you know, I want to talk a couple of things about fishing, obviously, but also just about Finland. And we've done some episodes now in Norway and Sweden and, you know, and around Europe. And I'm trying to work my way around. We haven't really focused on Finland yet. So I'm curious to talk, you know, like describe Finland a little bit and maybe how it's different than say Sweden or Norway, or is it very similar to what you have going? Yeah, well, I would say that we are very similar to Norway and Sweden. Well, Norway is rich. <laughs> oh right, Norway. Norway has a lot more money. Yeah, Norway has a lot more money. They have, they have more money than anyone. Why is that? Why is I'm just curious on that. Why does Norway have? Is that just uh... they have oil? Oh, there, there you go. They have the oil, right? They have the oil, and they have only like five or six million people to share it. Yeah. So, and also the politics in Norway, they have this uh, oil trust for the for the government that for the people that it's like the one of the, maybe the richest trust in the in the whole world they are like i would say they are filthy rich yeah <laughs> but also i love norway i go norway every year i love to go fishing there i have a lot of norwegian friends and uh, it's it's like i would say that in back north if you go to if you go up north in finland if you go there and immediately when you cross the border of finland and norway it's like holy who made these borders? Because when you cross the border of Finland and Norway, the mountains will start. <laughs> it's like oh right, you are, it's immediately you know the huge mountains and these uh, stunning views. It's so different, but but uh, well, it's, it's different and and also the language. You know, the Swedish and Norwegian, the language Swedish and Norwegian language, they are almost the same. And they're all very close to the Danish. Gotcha. But, uh, we are like different. Our language sounds like Estonian language, and the 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 people who know better than they say that we have nothing to do with Estonian language. So I don't get it because I understand some parts of Estonian, and Estonians can they can understand some things. So it's tricky. But also in Finland, we have a, we have three official languages. And we have first language is the it's Finnish, and second is Swedish. I can speak some Swedish mm. as well, and the third one is Sami. So we have a three of language in in Finland, and most likely we are pretty similar to Sweden and Norway. I say like our culture is the same. We we all love skiing and hockey. <laughs> oh, and hockey! So hockey is big. Hockey is the biggest sport in Finland, and I think it's biggest in uh, Sweden as well. And uh, I think Norway, it's not that uh, Norway, the ski is better, like bigger. The Norway, since they are ski, they are crazy about the cross country skiing. And uh, well, it's, it's big in Finland as well, the skiing, like cross country skiing. And uh, how do I, Norway, Norway doesn't, you know, they don't belong to European Union. Sweden and Finland, we are part of the European Union. And Oh, really? Oh, wow. That's interesting. Okay. And your latitude is, I mean, you're kind of, if you look at where you're at, well, tell me that. What is the closest city to where your um, your lodge is at? Yubaskula. Uh, oh, how do you, uh, what part? Oh, it's central, right? Central? Central. Finland. It's, it's uh, well, it's like a belly of Finland. The belly, okay. <laughs> belly bottom of Finland, I would say. Yeah, and then it's it's like uh, three hours from uh, 
Well, if I drive from Helsinki, it's two and a half hours. But if uh, if you, as a first timer, you will drive as a tourist, you will drive for three hours. Yeah, what, talk about that a little bit. So we got Joe, I can't even pronounce that, but J-Y-V-A-S-K-Y-L-A. So where would we, if we're flying in, let's just take it from you're leaving from New York and you're flying over. Where do you fly into? What's the city you're flying into? You will you will fly to Helsinki. Helsinki, which is, uh, is Helsinki south of, of you? Yeah, south. Yeah, it's south. It's and it's the capital of Finland. Oh yeah, Helsinki. It's right on the right on the uh, the ocean there. Yeah, Gulf of Finland. Okay, so Helsinki. Yeah, obviously Helsinki, and that's a well known city. And then you just drive. What you say, two hours up north? Uh, two and a half, three hours. Two and a half, three hours. So you so you get a rental car, drive two and a half, three hours, and then you come into your city. Where are you located? You know, from the city is the what's the name of the river? Talk about that. The name of the river and and where you're at. It's Kapenkoski, and also we are, well, it's it's tricky as, mm, yeah, Kape, you won't find that from the map, so you have to put uh, Lauka probably there, or Äänekoski. Okay. I think for you it's easier to put Lauka, L-A-U-K-U-U, and, uh, and or Konnevesi, it's also because besides Kapenkoski, this water, we just like last spring, we leased six other rivers for us. Oh, wow. So it's... Uh, that's why we are creating this Troutland Finland thing. We basically we have all the best trout waters in Finland. It's it's under my control, which is pretty unique and, and they are private waters and so I can control everything what's happening there. So the, I think that's the key thing if you're trying to to create a travel business, to have a control on your rivers. Right. So basically on those rivers is is brown trout the main species? Is it the only species? Are there other things we should be thinking about? Uh, well, we have uh, brown trout. We have grayling as well. And then we have pike, birch, you know, northern pike. Yep. And birch. And also we have this, uh, it's like sander. It's like walleye kind of thing. If the U.S. Uh, mm. listeners are, are listening, it's, it's sander. Okay. In Europe. Sander. Sander or pike birch. I, it's, and uh, it's very similar to walleye. Okay. We'll put a link out to, uh, yeah, pie, it's kind of a pike perch. Right, it looks just like it. We'll put a link to some photos of a Xander. Oh, is it Xander or Xander? I guess it's uh, Z, right? Yeah, with the C. Yeah, Xander. Okay, cool. I'll put a I'll put a little fish, kind of some ichthyology or some information there on, on that. Awesome. So you got, so you have some species, but people are coming, you know, if somebody's flying over, they're probably coming for those big brown trout. Is that kind of the main focus? Yeah, yeah. They, they're coming for brown trout, but then... And also, if the guys spend like five, six days fishing, they also, some of them like to fish for pike, northern pike, because we have a few, these like a 20 pounder, 30 pounder pikes. Oh, yeah. I would love to do that. That's the thing I think that brown trout for sure. But if you can mix it up and, be, and say, okay, but I want to get a couple of days of northern pike fishing, that'd be awesome too. Yeah. And they are not on heavy pressure because most of our majority of our clients will really fish for brown trout. And even those brown trout are not under heavy pressure because I can, I can control that pressure. So now, who's when in the guiding? Is it just you, or do you have like a, a group of guides that are helping out? Yeah, I'm guiding myself, and I have three guides who is doing with me. Are they all doing? Do you guys mix up, or do they all have drift boats, or are you doing some walk and wade stuff? Uh, vice versa, both. Yeah, you got both. Okay. Then uh, one of the the youngest of the guides, he he doesn't drive drift boat yet. But uh, we, we are three guys who are using the drift boat. Okay. And the timing, you mentioned this earlier, but if we were coming in, you're saying when would be, you know, if we're looking ahead till maybe next year, when would be the prime time to hit that up? Uh, June, mid-June, late June, August, early July. Like last weekend, I was at uh, Germany. We were near Munich. This, uh, I think that fly fishing show is the biggest in Europe. Right. Yeah, that was the nicest fly fishing show I ever been. That was really nice. So there, all the clients were asking for 24. Like, we didn't sell any rods for this summer, but we we, we sold a few for our 24. And uh, we are started taking bookings, I think. Okay. So you have availability. If somebody was listening right now in, in like, June or July of 2023, you have some availability? Yeah, uh, July we have in August. June is basically sold out. Yeah. Yeah. Jen. Okay, good. Well, uh, not sure, you know, again, like we found, you know, you were listening to this, like you listened to this podcast, right? Back, um, 
before. Do you remember how you first, I'm always curious about that, how you found the podcast? Uh, my friend sent me a link. Oh, there you go. That's it. Word of mouth. Yeah. Word of mouth, right? That's always the, a good way to, yeah, it's been cool because we, you know, Europe is one of those things for me, you know, it's like, you know, there's so many places around the world to fish and I want to fish. I'd love to fish Finland and every country in Europe. And, uh, and so, but I know, right. It's going to be challenging, but that's my goal. My goal is to actually get out and travel. So I hope to, you know, like now we're, we're building this and maybe down the line, right. We can meet in person. That'd be, or maybe we'll see in the U S as well. Right. Yeah. Oh, you can, well, we can do the both and, uh, you can fly in and go to Rena and then you can yeah. do the Finland at the same, same trip. That's right. No, be no mix up. Yeah, exactly. Combo. Yeah, perfect. And the rain, and that's where kind of we started talking because John Bond has that operation yeah. over in Norway. And, um, but yeah, so on the drift boat, so are there like you have the drift boats going? I mean, can you go around Finland, Sweden, Norway and find other operations that are using drift boats? No, I, I know only the Rina. And I didn't know about the Rina before I, I know the river and I know the blade, but I didn't know that uh, they have a drift boat as well. And I was actually, I was just, I was cross country skiing. While listening to the podcast, and like, that's what? amazing! Wow, where were you at? Where were you at? Were you like in northern Finland? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it's uh, it's uh, we are very close to each other, and and uh, it's like, uh, well, I always described Europe as uh, you know, it's like USA, like the countries are like a state. You know, you can you can think about like like that as a link, like distances and and everything. It's like uh, it's not the big thing for us to fly to Germany for a fly fishing show. It's to our flight. Yeah, that's it. That's what's cool is that Europe is just, yeah, we think of it sometimes as countries, but yeah, it's just like flying around the U.S., same sort of thing. Yeah, same same sort of thing. And and uh, also, what, are you living at the East Coast or, or West Coast? Uh, I'm on the West Coast. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, I'm just, like I said, the um, Willys is just about uh, four hours south of me down, you know, in Oregon. Oh, okay. Yeah. I actually have a Koffler boat, which is uh, in between Willie's, you know, only about two hours. But there's a ton. Yeah, there's a ton of great boats. There's lots of lots of great drift boats. So this is good. Well, let's talk about the fishing a little bit because I want to I want to paint that picture. So if we're if we're coming in in July and brown trout is what we want to get, right? We're fired up. Maybe you know have some experience with different types of fishing. What is the what's the technique? Talk about how you're catching some of these big brown trout on your river there. The biggest we'll catch with the streamers. The streamer fishing is it's my favorite, and uh, like average, like normal size of piece, it's like uh, half meter, fifty centimeters. Is it like twenty inch? Yeah, it's like fifty millimeters or so. And then the biggest are like uh, it's like twenty eight inch. It's, it, then it's it's a big one, and and the fish are basically between this twenty inch and twenty eight inch. That's the, like uh, that's pretty common. And uh, you can hook bigger one, but it's like this 28, 30 inch is like uh, we have that that kind of fish like oh, uh, what I would like to you maybe. Pretty common. But no, not really. It's if, if it's like 30 inch, it's like all, only like 20 fish a year. Yeah, yeah. With more, most like it's, like, it's like, well, the clients always say that I, I lost a big one and it was over 28 inch like it was well over 70 centimeter and then always those big ones are like the you know it they i sometimes i'm smiling with myself that how come i always ask did you see the fish no no but it was huge <laughs> okay <laughs> that's right it was for sure yeah it was over 30 inches i didn't see it but i know yeah no i know that's the the fish stories right we with fishermen we kind of come up with stories yeah it's good it's good i'm not making any fun out of it it's like it's it keeps the sport alive if people are dreaming and getting excited. Yeah. It's nothing bad. But it's sometimes when you are with the, if you're at the river like three months in a row, sometimes it's like, well, it's like uh, you hear the same stories like almost every day. So it's like, okay, I know. Yeah, I hear you. I think what it is is, you know, I don't know. I think as you get older, you change a little bit. But yeah, I mean, obviously catching a big fish is fun, it's exciting. But like for this trip, you know, I mean, I would love to catch big fish, but I mean, just getting to Finland and hanging out at your lodge, you know, and just being on, in a different place in Europe and coming into Helsinki and right. The travel, 
that's what it's about to me, right? I mean, and I think that's why Finland's kind of cool because it's not Norway. It's like it's a different place. And then, so I always feel like the fishing's almost like icing on the cake, right? Do you see it as that? Like, I mean, yeah. when people are coming, do they feel like, I'm sure people want to get big fish, lots of fish, but do you feel like your clientele are just happy to be there and feeling good about this? Yes, yeah. And it's like safety and romance. Uh, romance and I'm uh, sorry, my, my English is yeah. my first leg. And, uh, uh, yeah, you're doing good, by the way. Your your English is great. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Yeah, thank you. I'm trying my best. Um, when it comes to fishing, it's it's like my thing, it's always like uh, it's dreamer or dry fly. And you can hook those big fish with the dry flies also, especially later on the season. Today's episode is sponsored by Daiichi Fishing Hooks, a leader in the fly fishing industry and still the world's sharpest hook. Daiichi has been producing premier fishing hooks for the past 30 years, a timeless brand with a bright new future. And I have a great connection with Daiichi going back about as long as I can remember. I've tied thousands of flies using those Daiichi hooks. I've tied many dry flies, wet flies, steelhead flies on their vast assortment of hooks. Never once had an issue on strength or quality, so very excited to get the good word out right now. Tempered with carbon-rich steel, Daiichi offers superior penetration without compromising the hook's structural integrity. If you want to support this podcast and a great hook company right now who has been producing high-quality hooks longer than most, check them out right now at wetflyswing.com slash Daiichi. That's D-A-I-I-C-H-I, Daiichi. You support this podcast and local businesses by clicking through that link to Daiichi. Okay, now back to the show. When's the best season for dry fly? If you want to come in and get a big chance at a big fish or just a brown on a dry, when is that? I would say with the dry flies, it's late July or August. Okay, late July. And what are the what are the hatches that you might be coming off then? You have um, caddis. Caddis is the main thing. Yep, caddis. We have mayflies as well, but they are earlier. But caddis is the, it's the number one thing. Let's go into the dries and then we'll take them to the streamer. So, you know, on the dries, what are you, what's that look like? How are you finding the fish? And then what are you putting on to catch them on the dry? Well, the different cupas, you know, these, um, yep. I'm, I'm not sure if you have those. Yeah. But cupa mutations and, uh, and caddies, like cotter caddies, you know, those glassy. Yep. Goddard. Yeah. yeah the big deer hair fly. Yep. Yeah. The deer ones. Yes. I'm like, uh, I'm my wife. And she wouldn't let me tie any more flies. Yeah. Because of that. <laughs> yeah. It, it, let's see. So the Goddard caddis is a good pattern to have in your box. It's the must. It's the best, best dry fly. Okay. What size? What size are you using? I would say 10, 12. Yeah. 10, 12. Okay. Perfect. 14. You don't have to go with the 18 or 20. It's it's not. Well, actually, I don't. I haven't seen Goddard caddis so small ever. But, well, I would say that the IFIS 10, 12, 14 size dry flies maybe 16 sometimes when it comes to pupas and uh, you know uh, swedish super pupa it's swedish fly which is also very good especially it's pretty good guiding fly because with the super pupa like uh you can fish with the super pupa and let it swing oh oh wow you know so for the fishing guide it's very good fly because a client that can't handle the line or you know can't handle the free drift you know what i mean oh yeah so you put the fly can swing i can skate it's very very fun yeah yeah wow so the pupa so that's the fly you're putting so now that's obviously not a dry fly it's not a stream so you are doing some under the surface fishing with that yeah it's just a bit under but i like i try to avoid all this french new thing and, and check new thing, you know that yeah you don't do the euro euro nymphing stuff no, I, and also I put some, sorry to say, but I also create the, the rules, oh, the fishing rules also. Oh, wow. You have the rules. You create the rules for the fishing. Like literally if people are fishing. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That's cool. Wow. We create the rules. Of course, there's a Finnish fishing law also that, that sets up all the, you know, the minimum lengths and, and uh, like brown trout, it's. In, in the Finland, you cannot kill a brown trout if it's wild. Yep. So, so it's catch and release always. You know, the law says. So, but if the brown trout is uh, stocked, like as a baby, because there's some, uh, I don't know, like fry releasing or how you, how you describe it. Yeah, fry. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, and, and like one year olds, and uh, those one year olds they cut the adipose spin off, so you you will know if it's born nature or or you know the fry or so on. How to say that? But anyway, but also for that the minimum length is like twenty five inch. So basically, it's all catch and release when it comes to brown trout in Finland. Okay, and there's a group, yeah, there's a Finnish group that still manages, right? You're not managing the whole fishery, like if there's some issue, like if, no, only this river, only this river, right? So, and you basically you restrict, so you can't euro nymph on your waters. Well, you can, you can, but we are, we we created the fishing rules, local fishing rules, that it's not very easy because we we put the uh, you know minimum. Uh, thickness for the leader, right. for example, and we are not letting the people use, you know, the lead uh, weight on the line also, and uh, also only you can use only two flies at the same time. So I'm thinking that some some people might get, you know, nervous or get pissed off a little bit, but we are trying to not to be the practice field for the Finnish national fly fishing team right do you have a finnish is there a finnish uh, team team finland yeah yeah fly fishing team finland and because we have also the competitive fly fishing it's it's uh, rather big in finland we have uh, active like i i don't know maybe something 1000 plus minus active and 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 who who is doing this and because of the central finland this troutland area is like a popular yeah, it's the main brown trout area in Finland. And now, because we are, you know, we are doing these most famous rivers also. We There's only two, maybe two places in Finland that are like uh, equal of these places. And all the rest, we, we are operating. So, and all, I know also these couple other places like Vihaboren Koski, Lasakoski, they are also, you know, setting the rules to, you know, it's nothing personal for anyone, but no, I understand you know, it. For competitor fishermen, you can go and and you can hook like thirty brown trout in a very very you know short area, and you don't selective. You will get you know baby ones and the big ones all. So it's not uh, yeah, it's not good for the fish. It's not good for the business. No, <laughs> no, and I think it makes sense. And you know that's the cool thing is that. I totally hear, and there's waters around here, the same thing. They have to restrict certain things because that's just the way it is, right? And it's it's fine. I mean, but what we're talking about here is dry fly fishing, you know, getting back to fly. So dry fly fishing streamers. Are you fishing the dry flies mostly out of the boat, casting towards the bank, or are you fishing on foot? Uh, on foot. Dry fly fishing better on foot, yeah. On foot, yeah. So you have spots that, are, do you have spots you know, or are you kind of like walking sections looking for fish? Uh, we know the places. We know the places. We know the timing. Well, it's it's like a Swiss clock at right, some rivers that you know that uh, you know 10 p.m. they will rise and the hat will come. Usually, you know that when you go to July, it's like a 10 p.m. at the Sikakoski Konnenvesi. You know that the fish will rise and they they will start to hatch. And so it's it's sometimes it doesn't happen, but usually it does. And also, of course, the weather. You know, the place big part of it as well. It's not just a clock and but we it's it's about the experience. The guides and me, we've been fishing there you know, half of our lives. So we, we know the place quite well and, and it's all the, the stretches that we are fishing, they are all like uh, although we have like over ten kilometers like uh um, in miles like well, close to ten miles. No, not to ten miles. Go figure like six miles, seven miles water. Yeah, it's a good chunk. Yeah, it's it's all different. They are like uh, small stretches uh, between the small lakes. So the yeah, I see. If we were coming in in July, let's say we were coming in in like kind of that mid July. When are people? Do you are people typically coming in for like a six day or what night are they coming in or is, is there a variation? Well, most most foreigners they will come five or six days fishing, one week stay, and uh, the local guys they they like if they are from Finland, they will usually book like two three days. But if you're outside of Finland, it's usually the week. Yeah. So if we were, say, coming in and, and sometime in mid-July, we could just say, hey, we're going to come in on a, a Sunday night and then start fishing on Monday sort of thing? Yes, yes. And uh, like now we have this first uh, foreigner, like a tourist group. So it's, they're coming like late June. And uh, actually that's very good timing that they're coming. And 
they they are arriving Sunday. I just last night I was doing the schedule for them, and I like okay, the guy we come like Monday. We have like three days guiding and three days, you know, they go without the guide. So on their own, the three first Thursdays are with the guide. But I was like putting that okay, they can when they they arrive like. 5 6 p.m. at the evening they have like few hours maybe they are tired if they are not they can go to this you know i i told you you know before that they're between the stones and the mills or someone they can go and you cast and have a few beers maybe or that's great whatsoever or have a cup of coffee if they don't drink beer but most fly fishermen drink beer that's right luckily what's your beer what's your beer of choice you guys have some good brews in in uh, that part of europe we have plenty of small breweries, but uh, I I mostly I drink Longero, long drink. It's the uh, it's Finnish national uh, drink of fly fishermen. Oh, what, now what, how do you spell that? Let's get that one. Let's get a link out to that. How do you spell that? L O N K Longe E R O Longero, Jing Long Drink. Oh, okay, yeah, Longero. Okay, perfect. Yeah, we'll get a. This is awesome. Yeah, of course we're you know micro brews is like we love it here too. We got a bunch so. That's pretty cool. So over there, you always think of, I always, you know, because I haven't been to, you know, Finland, I always wonder about the beer. So you have lots of micro brews. Do you have like the IPA stuff or is it more like lager? Yes. yes. It's it's getting very popular, everything, IPAs and lager. I, if I drink, I'm a little bit girl with, when it comes to the beers. Well, I'm, I like, uh, I like to drink Guinness sometimes. Oh yeah. But mostly, yeah, Guinness, I like that, but I think it because I'm an, I've been in Ireland a few times, and I, it's like brings back some memories. Some bad, some bad memories. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, mostly, if I drink beer, I go with a lager or even some solo Corona. So I'm I'm pretty boring guy when it comes to the beer. That's right. Yeah, I I, I like the easy drinking beers. <laughs> That's cool. But if somebody was coming there, like if we were coming there in July, we could find ourselves a good IPA. Yeah, you will. You will. We have breweries in in our town, and also we have the. We have local gin also. Oh, gin, okay. Gin and tonics, right? Yeah, gin. Con- yeah, actually, I was at the fishing show last week, and we were serving the, the local gin for the for the clients. For the you know, oh yeah, if they come to yeah, they come to the stand. They came to the stand. Oh wow. Yeah, and if they were, you know, keep asking enough questions, and I was like, ah, gin and tonic maybe. Oh man, so you're serving gin yeah. and tonics at the fly fishing show? Yeah, I was serving gin and tonics at the, at the fly fishing show, and. The thing was the the chino was uh, it, it's made of the same water that they are about to fish. So I I always told them, okay, now you drunk the water, next you will fish the river. Yeah, <laughs> that's awesome. I love this. So I see why this show is so good. You got gin and tonics pouring. You got I see this is this is the show to get to. This is in Ger- in Munich. And uh, Munich, yeah, like uh, half an hour from uh, Munich. I don't know. It's just like I don't know how to say, it, but it's some suburb. It's it's the yeah it was actually more more countryside but it's only half an hour from Munich and I think it was just three or four halls and then the, there was a field it was like a, a next to the big old church and it's it's very historic like atmosphere and it was very nice I was so so surprised how nice and the atmosphere was good maybe because we had the gin and tonics and that's what it was <laughs> we were at the Germany so in Munich it's the beer that's the beer country. You know, I was with my wife there. <laughs> I have to tell you the funny stories. My wife, she's not the big uh, meat eater. She doesn't. Well, see, if she eats the meat, it has to be some pile mignon or right. reindeer or something like fancy meat. She don't really like uh, eat sausages or anything like that. So when we went for the lunch, it's like there was nothing but sausages at the, at the fair. <laughs> Or beer, so so it was like they can eat anything there. But then my my Swiss friend, I was we have this Swiss agent, and uh, we were with him there. And and also I don't wanna I I'm not into the sausage today. I will take the salad, and he took a salad, and the salad was it was plastic cup, oh. uh, full cold sausages. Oh no and way! Then were onions and something green a little bit, but it was basically cup full of cold sausage <laughs> that was german sausage salad oh man i love that it's all sausages and even my sweet friend rolf was like i didn't expect this no no that sounds perfect it's like you'll you'll eat sausages and beer that's what we have 
yeah, that's the Munich was like all sausage and beer, but I didn't complain. I was I was very happy there, and and the crowd seems to be very happy as well. So yeah, well, what's that for your your? Because I always feel like that's a great thing. You know, you go to some new place. You know, you kind of want to have the local their food because it's like, hey, I don't want to eat what I eat at home. I want to have the, you know, in Germany, well, sausages, sure, that's it. What about Finland? What would the meals look like there if we're coming there in mid July? What's our first meal looking like? Uh, probably, I will, I will serve you, Sander, this wall, I think. Yep. Or some other fish, or also we are serving reindeer there. Oh wow! Yeah. We are doing reindeer. We are, we are serving another deer. We we like to. We are doing the you know local dishes. We don't everything what we serve besides uh, reindeer is like uh, from the same area. Yeah, it's local. That's cool. You know, local, local. You know, mushrooms and uh, game food and also fish from the lakes and and uh, well, the problem the reindeer is the the only thing which comes from the north. It's far away, like ten hour drive away. Oh yeah, but it's still coming from Finland. Yeah, yeah, it's it's uh, it's a wild reindeer, and I had a Sami friend who is you know sending me the reindeer there. It's very good. Yeah, some foreigners doesn't like to eat reindeer. I I, I noticed that as reindeer, well. <laughs> yeah, essentially reindeer is a caribou, right? That's what a reindeer. It's a caribou. Yeah, it's basically caribou. Yeah. Yeah, and your latitude again. When you look at the latitude, that's a cool thing about where you're at. I mean, you're, obviously Finland is very long. But I mean, you're you're right there across. Um, you're kind of in Upper Canada, right? The latitude, or even Alaska. I mean, you're you're pretty far north. Yeah, we are. Like uh, we are, I think the Arctic Circle from our place. It's like five hour drive. Five hour drive. Yeah, so that's a cool. That's a cool thing. You're. It's like you know. You're like going to. I mean, what is that like the environment? So you're saying that's the short season because you guys get plenty of snow during the winter time. When does the snow start coming in? Uh, late October, November. Yeah, and. We still have some piles of snow in my house, like on my backyard. And it's like the, the normal winter weather, like December, January is like uh, 5 Fahrenheit. Or it could be even like uh, minus 20 Fahrenheit. Yeah. So it, it gets cold. It's pretty cold, yes. Is it also, do you guys get a ton of sun? Is it like in the wintertime? Is it really sunny as well? Well, it's pretty dark, like November, December. It's It's dark. It's dark. It's dark. Yeah, it's like four or five hour daylight. Oh, right. Yeah, because you're doing it. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but June, June, we have 20, 24 hour daylight. Yeah, exactly. That's why it's cool. That's one of the reasons. And yeah. I, I love the Finnish summer. That's that's like, a, if you ask what is the best thing in Finland, I would say that summer and uh, it's safe. It's like we don't, I don't lock my door cars in New Vascular. Yeah, love that. That's a good feeling, isn't it? That's a good feeling to know that you like you don't have to lock the doors. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So maybe in Helsinki it's a little bit more dangerous, and maybe you can find in our town as well. You can find the places where you should lock your door. But basically, in our house, I, uh, we keep the you know the doors unlocked. Of course, we have two dogs as well, but that helps a bit. Oh right, right, yeah, yeah, gotcha. But basically, Finland is very, very, very safe country. It's it's uh, like a you asked before, like how to describe Finland, and you know, if you compare it to Sweden or Norway, yeah. it's like uh, I was with this Jamie in uh, was the fishing guide at the Keys. Hi, Jamie, if you listen. Oh yeah, very nice guy, and and uh, and his wife. She asked me that how you describe the Finland, that well, what it's like, and I told her, and also Jamie, I told him as well that we we have basically the culture, like we have all the like. It's like a mini Canada, I would say. Mm, a little yeah. bit like Canada, but everything is smaller. And we have yeah. our generation. We are we grew up listening to Motley Crue and Guns N' Roses, of course. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, it's like, and then you know, when you know, it's everything. And <laughs> you know. yeah, yeah, Guns N' Roses. What was your favorite Guns N' Roses? Uh, what's one song that pops in your head for Guns N' Roses? Uh, I would say Rocket Queen. Rocket Win. Rocket Queen. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think because I... From Appetite. Yeah, yeah. From Appetite. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that, but they are, like, <laughs> talking about the Guns N' Roses, there's no bad songs on the Appetite. Yeah. Appetite so. for Destruction. That's right. Your Rocket Queen. Yeah, Rocket Queen. Oh, 
We'll put. I always, I always love to get a link out, so we'll get a get some Rocket Queen, get that song in the show notes. Yeah, Guns and Roses. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, we're the same generation. Obviously, we were born the same year. And uh, GNR, right? That was like early '90s, I think. Was that what it was? Uh, late '80s, early '90s, and I think '87, '88. Axel Rose, right? Axel Rose was the character. Yeah. yeah. And then, and, but basically, the, the culture we we have the like. It's very Sweden and Finland. We are very American countries, as you know, so to speak. We have you go there and you you close your eyes and open again. You might think, oh, I'm in America. Yeah. How is that different from say? Because it seems like that, you know. Because now I've talked to a few people. Like, how would it be different, say, Finland than like Germany? Is Germany quite a bit different? Is that not as much like Canada? Uh, Germany is like um, I think because Germany is the it's the older country. All oh, right. I would say it, in Germany they have stronger own opinions and stronger and longer and older culture. You know their own culture. Yeah. And they have a lot of these old buildings as well. And you know we have in Finland we we have of course some old buildings as well, but which are for the war, we fought against the Russia during the you know the war. and then the Germans came in and they burned the Lapland blah blah blah. But we have this history, and like Finland is a very young country. We are just a uh, hundred years, hundred and five years old country. Oh, no kidding. Oh, wow. So that's, a, yeah, I don't even know this history. So, gosh. Yeah, 1917, we we got rid of Russia. Oh, wow. So you were part, so Finland was part of Russia up until 1917. Yeah, we've been part of Sweden before, like centuries. And then the Sweden lost the war, and then Russia took over. Then uh, 100 plus years ago, we, we got rid of Russia as well. Right. And that's the giant. Russia is always the, it's kind of the, it's the terrible thing, but it's then it's almost comical. It's so terrible, right? You got, you got Putin, you know, out there yeah. and, uh, and it's just this massive thing. But I mean, how do you guys feel? Do you even like, is it something you're even thinking about on a daily basis about Russia or is it not even really? Well, I, I do read all the stories about the Ukraine at the moment. Because it's on the news all the time, I do. But also, I do read all the news about, yeah, you know, the Biden versus, uh, yeah, <laughs> the comedy star, and um, we don't. We learn our our parents, our grandparents. Well, my my grandfather stayed for the war, so it's there's only one generation between the. War. And you're talking World War. You're talking World War Two. Yes. So I think my generation is the first generation that. Uh, were you know accepting the Russians and we were like starting you know to do the business and everything was going a little bit smoother, but still, uh, well, I it's very hard to describe, but uh, but we didn't really care about Russia yeah. before. Like we did with the business. Like I've been there fishing like call up in Insula like twenty times, not maybe fifteen times. I've been there and. Uh, so I've been there a lot. Oh, you have? You've been in the Kola? Yeah, I've been in the Kola, yeah. Wow. In, at the few rivers, and I've been doing this. For Atlantic salmon? Uh, mostly brown trout. I'm a brown trout. Yeah, yeah. But I've been doing, you know, I, I've been doing the salmon also in the Kola River and Haraloka River. But I've been doing mostly like uh, Upper Varasina. Yeah. That like my heaven. I've been there like plus minus 10 times. Oh, wow. And actually, there's a segue to another story, but I will come back to that later yeah. on. But okay, <laughs> I'm trying to answer you about the Russia. And I was going to say, as you're thinking about that, you know, my thing with Russia, and I guess it's a worldwide thing, obviously, but I mean, it's cool that we're the same age because, you know, I remember in growing up as a kid, like in the 80s, right? So I was 10 or whatever. I mean, you know, it was always on my mind, right? Like the Cold War, Russia, nuclear yes. holocaust. Like it was always, I was like, there was only a couple of things that scared me. One was, one was Russia. And the other one was like Mount St. Helens blowing up again. Okay. Right. So other than that, I was good. So, I mean, but for me, I'm on, on the other side of the world. You're right next to Russia near, not far from Moscow. What is it like a 10 hour drive to Moscow? Yeah. And, uh, maybe four or five hours to St. Petersburg. Yeah. So you're right. I mean, you're right there. You could drive down there. So you're even closer. I would imagine that when you were a kid, you thought about it a little bit or no. Never. When I was a kid, never afraid of Russia because I never, actually, I never even thought about it when I was a kid. I just, I felt sorry about that because we knew about the 
it was like Northern Korea. Right. There was people were poor. They didn't have money. They didn't have food. They didn't have clothes. They didn't have anything during the Cold War. And uh, it was very, very poor country. And, uh, and we knew that. We heard the stories because a lot of Finns, you know, they went there for uh, doing some... Well, for an example, we built a lot of, you know, buildings and houses to Russia, like the Soviets and, you know, they to exchange trade or something. And I don't know how to describe, but I was afraid, like these uh, general buildings, I, I was afraid of their nuclear uh, power plants. Yeah. That's the only thing I was afraid of. And But I wasn't afraid of that maybe they would attack because I knew that we would be them. It's in our blood that... The, and also the Russians, they are more afraid of Finns, I think. that. All right. We have, we have, yeah, yeah. They know that they don't... If they could, they would, you know, even before. Because it's like uh, they are still, you know, like, for example, the Putin thinks that, you know, I need to take over Estonia, Finland, uh, Ukraine. They are my countries. But they know that because we have the biggest... Uh, I think in Finland we have the biggest military in Europe. Oh wow! All the men have to go to army. It's like mini. It's like in Israel, but it's not like I did eleven months when I was like nineteen. So oh wow! Basically, all the men know how to shoot. All the men know how to use the cannon. Let's take a quick break for a word from our sponsor. Waters West Fly Fishing Outfitters is your go-to resource for spay and swung fly techniques for the OP and beyond. They are known for their deep selection of unique high quality fly tie materials and they are the gateway to some of the great steelhead rivers in the country. I was able to get out on the water with Ed and it was an amazing day. We uh, hit the shop early, met him at the shop, we fired up the old vehicle and headed out on the river. Ed is the type of guy that you feel comfortable right from uh, minute one. And it was a good day. We ended the trip uh, for buying into this unimproved boat ramp, uh, pulling the boat out, and, and we ended up with a great opportunity uh, and landed a nice, very nice cromer and had a few other touches. Fished one of the great rivers in the country. It was amazing. Not only do they cover steelhead, but all species in the area, and they have a passion for all fish that swim up or live around salt. They can outfit any angler from the beginner to the most hardcore fishing bum you can imagine. They have a great online store, fast shipping, and uh, you will be supporting conservation when you support Waters Last. Please check in with Ed and Kyle right now to say hi and let them know you heard uh, from them on this podcast. And you can do that right now, wetflyswing.com slash waterswest. What was that like for 11 months? Because, I mean, I think of me, I'm I'm kind of a wimpy guy. I, I always scared, like the military scared me, you know, so I stayed away from it. But, like, what was it like for you? Did you enjoy it? I hate it. <laughs> you hate it, too. I hate it because, you know, a 90-year-old guy just after school, and uh, I was like, uh, because it was mandatory, you had to go there. And what did you do? What did you do for 11 months? Did you just, like, learn to shoot a gun and, like... Uh... I was actually, I was pretty, uh, well, you had to, you know... I know how to, you know, the. I'm, maybe I'm not sure anymore, but they teach you how to, you know, pick your own bunkers and how to, you know, shoot, uh, you know, the machine guns and uh, how to, but I don't remember anymore, but I think this uh, trainee, the first two, three months was all about, you know, the beginner stuff, you know, what they will teach for everyone. But uh, as a, I'm a, like a chef as my profession, so they put me, at the kitchen. Oh, you're a chef. Oh, right. You got the chef. Yeah. So I was I was at the kitchen, and also I was doing the, I was like a wire guy. I I, I run the wires around, the, you know, for the telephones. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah, gotcha. Yeah, connection. I don't know how the connection forces or something. I don't know how the. Yeah, the, the fiber optics and stuff like that. For, yeah. Yeah. So I did that, but only thing I liked at the army time, it was, I liked the shooting. I like that, uh, you know, the destruction things. <laughs> yeah, right. Is there any hunting out in Finland? Yeah, a lot. What are they hunting? What's the most popular hunting species? Maybe ducks and the uh, moose. <laughs> oh, and moose. Ducks and moose, right. Do you have, like, are there, what are the other big uh, land mammals other than moose? Uh, deers. Yeah, caribou. Uh, well, not, you are not allowed to kill the caribous because in Finland, all the caribous, uh, 
aka reindeers they are owned by the sami guys so they all mark their own ones so and they gather them the the reindeers like i think it's october maybe you know and it's a big cultural thing and you know at the at the lapland of Finland. have you seen the movie well you probably haven't seen this movie i'm not sure if you're a big movie buff but in the u.s there's this movie that came out it was called God, what was it? it was mel gibson it was basically about Santa Claus, right? But it was the the alternate Santa Claus, and but they told some of the history. Yeah, Bad Santa, no? Yeah, exactly. Bad Santa. So you know the movie? Yeah, I don't remember anymore, but that I saw it. <laughs> yeah, Bad Santa. Yeah, so but it's kind of interesting because it goes back to like you know a little bit of how you know, I mean Santa Claus essentially, right? I mean I think it started. Was it? I think it was in kind of more your neck of the woods. The idea of that, right? Actually, Santa lives in Finland. Did you know that? Exactly. Yeah, that's the point. Yeah, yeah so yeah. Finland is his home. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Finland is Santa's home, of course. Perfect. Perfect. Well, let's get back to the... Um, I want to talk streamers real quick because I want to hear how you guys do it and if it's different from streamer. We've talked a lot. Of, I mean, John Bond talked about... We've talked about streamers. Talk about that real quick on streamers. How do you guys fish them? Are you fishing out of a boat from the bank? How big of flies? What sort of lines? Describe that a little bit. Well, uh, the flies could be really big or really small where we have... We of course we have these these tiny streamers like woolly boggers, but uh, those are like uh, when the fishing gets very 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 slow, then you you take these small woolly boggers. But we are fishing a little bit uh, different with our streamers. We use uh, they actually they are like small fishes and they're like uh, inches like uh, ten, so it's like four could be like, uh, three four inches long. Yeah. Okay. And so they it imitates small fries and some small fries and and uh, we have difference like black is always a classic one. We call this uh, my friend Mika Vaini, who is uh, one of the best river fishermen in Finland. It's uh, he creates a little bit like it's it has something to do with woolly booker. He will get mad when he, he hears this yeah. because it's nothing with the woolly booker. But it's called like musta kostaja, which is like a Black Revenger in English. Okay. <laughs> so it's, it's, I think he created that fly in Varasina Kola in Russia. He's been guiding there. And that's one of my favorite black streamers. And then we have these uh, tinsel flies, like golden, black, and silver tinsel flies, which are like, it could be like a one inch or four inch or even like six inch long. They are, they could be very different sizes and what we do is uh, we have a very different techniques you can you can cast and uh, let it go freely like a free is it like free swim yeah right right just let it kind of dead dead drift sort of thing yeah yeah dead, dead drift yeah dead drift uh, or then you can give a little bit like normal swing and give some speed and uh, one of the very finish way to do it is to sort of like pocket fishing with the streamer. So you cast upstream and uh, sometimes even, you know, give as much speed for the fly as you could. And sometimes that will, you know, get them nuts. Are you stripping at all or are you letting the current swing it mostly? Uh, yeah, I, I do the strip usually. Sometimes, especially I use the death, uh, death trick for those uh, tinsel flies like this, which is a big, big fries and, yeah, so the stream is you're imitating these fish. So what you might do is cast upstream, and then strip in. Toward, what does the strip look like? Is it like a super fast strip? Super. If you cast to upstream, there's a two different things. It's first, you can either do it like uh, just keep the keep your fly line and leader like uh, connect or tight. You can you, you have to pull the fly, and so when you see the you know the trout will will hit it, you will hook it, and you will you will game. Or you can do it like strip as fast as you could, yeah. And sometimes that's the that's the key for the success, right? And uh, I like that also. And sometimes they they hit the fly so aggressively, and that that's very hooking, that's tentating, and uh, I like that. And also uh, we do have one very finished fly, which is like a surfilauta, which is like surfboard. Okay, and that's like. A, it's a, it's a dry fly, but it's a streamer. It's the streamer with the foam on its back. So that floats. And that, especially on the early season, that will, that will drive them nuts. But you will miss like uh, half of the, of the takes because they just, you know, they, 
they, I think they are not eating the fly. They just, you know, try to get rid of the fly. So they are not taking it to their mouth. They are jumping after it. Oh, is it called the foamer? The uh, foamer? The what's the name of it? Yeah, it's a surf out. It's a surfboard. Oh, oh, I see it. I see it. We got Martin Jorgensen, our, our global fly fisher. Um, he did a. We'll put a link out to him. He he was on in the past, but it's called the uh, surf surfalata. Surfalata. Okay. Yeah. S u r f f i l a u t a. The surfboard tube fly. Yeah. So yes. yeah, it looks cool. I see. It. Yeah, basically, it has a big. Yeah, it's a big streamer that's got a big foam chunk all over its back. So the idea being that you can get it under the surface, or are you doing this thing like on the surface? Yeah, it, it doesn't sink at all. So you do the dead drift, or you can you know make some speed for it. Oh wow! So these fish are hitting. This is a mix. This is kind of a a mix between a dry fly and a streamer. Yeah, and that that's the only bad thing about this that if everybody is like a four guys are casting that same fly for a few hours, that the pool will be too much commotion. Yeah, it kills the pool. And also with those old tinsel, tinsel streamers, they will do the same. They will kill the pool if everybody happens to have those. Too flashy. Do you know anybody, like on your spots, you go to this place, you're like, okay, this is where I know a fish lives. Do you have some of these fish named? Is it kind of like that sort of thing where you know these fish? No. 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 There's a lot. There's a lot of different fish. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes the biggest biggest one is it's like I see the the guys are sending the pictures and the, the, the that looks familiar. And then I remember, oh, I take an, another, you know, SMS for someone or WhatsApp or something. Oh, ah, now I know. And they, but also these fish, some of the fish are like local. They stay at this one place. But also a lo- lot of those fish, they change, to, you know, from place to place. They are they are driving around. Cool. And, um, well, let's see. I mean, I think we've been chatting. I, I love, I've been loving this conversation. I think the fishing, what people would have to do is really just give you a call if they want to pick your brain or they can probably head over. What would be a resource? I always love to hear that. If somebody wants to learn more about Finland fishing for brown trout and stuff there, where would you send them? Is there a, like another website or a resource out there or books or anything? Or is it just call you? Yeah, our website or actually if, if I'm, I don't recall any, any, Books. Well, there might be some books about Finland. Well, you are, uh, Johnny, you are a Hall of Famer, right, of Finland. So you're probably one of the most knowledgeable. I'm sure, I'm not sure what the uh, requirement is to get in the Hall of Fame, but that's pretty amazing. Like, what did that feel like to be recognized there? When I got the call, I was about to ask that, uh, are you running out of candidates? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But I, I guess it's because I've been, I've been doing this along and, uh, I'm still friendly with everyone. I don't make too much enemies. I think it's because I've been doing this. This uh, I've been punching my head to the wall against the wall, you know, long enough, and and so I think it's because of that. And uh, yeah, and I've been writing a lot of articles to to fishing magazines, and mm. and uh, I've been doing a lot of TV shows. What's one of the magazines that you've written to, or you've written for? Uh, and Metsästys ja Kalastus. Oh, wow. It's like Pohjolan Perhakalasta. It's the number one Finnish fly fishing magazine. Oh, okay. I also, I was uh, part owning it for a small, oh, small, wow. small amount of time, like 10, 15 years ago. But that was a way another story. And also this Metsästys and Kalastus in English, it's hunting and fishing. And that's the, I think that's the biggest, biggest magazine in, in Scandinavia. In Australia, so it, there's no, they have more readers than any magazines in in fishing or hunting, than any in, not even in Norway, Sweden, Denmark. So it's and it's long, it's old one. It's been out for 150 years. Oh, good, good, good. So we'll get links out to that. And then what is Scandinavia? What is the the distinction? What are the countries that? What's the southern border of Scandinavia? Uh, I've seen Denmark. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Denmark. So Denmark is part of Scandinavia. Yeah, it's if you think about it like officially, I think it's like uh, Sweden, Norway, Denmark. I'm not sure is it Iceland or not. And then it's like I don't know. We call this Scandinavia the whole area is like Finland, Norway, Sweden, Denmark, Iceland. We call it Scandinavia, but it's really not. It's like more like Northern Europe or Northern uh, Northern country. It's like officially, I think it's only Sweden. Norway and some part of Denmark, but I'm not a so I'm Yeah, you're not. I know. No, I'm not, we're not going to hold you to this. We'll let people do their own research, but I'm kind of interested. What about um, 
Estonia. I mean, that's like right across the water from you guys, from Helsinki. What's what's Estonia? You don't hear much about Estonia fly fishing. I don't. There's not much fly fishing. I think the problem with Estonian fishing is that it was so long on. You know, the, the Soviets were ru- ruling there. Oh right, this is trashed. Yeah, it was ninety one or I know. Well, Estonian guys will kill me because I remember. I think ninety one was the year when they were free or 90. Oh, right. So it's really recent. Yeah. So before that, if you go to Russia, if the place is not very well, you know, the projected or guarded, then there's no animals or no no birds or no fish. Yeah, it's just been hammered. Yeah, they tend to kill them all. So that ruins a little bit the Estonian waters as well. But I think they have... They have good sander, this walleye fishing, and they they do have good uh, sea-run brown trouts, which are at the Baltic Sea, at the coast. But I'm not very, very good with the, with the Estonian fish. That's right. I think it's just like normal, right? There's all these countries around the world. There's probably some fish you could find if you did your research and dug into it. Yes, and if you know the people. And, and when it comes to fishing, it's uh, fishing in Finland, it's like uh, we ha- it's a long country. Like if you go north, you will see... There's the salmon rivers. Like, we don't have salmon rivers at center of Finland. We have the brown trout. We have this pike and birch. But if you go to to up north, then there is a salmon rivers, Tornio, Simojoki, which is like a small and fun river to, to fish. And they have like uh, Tana, River Tana, which is the best, most producing salmon river in, in Europe. But it's closed at the moment because... It's not in very good situation, not very good condition at the moment, but it was good river and it will be a good river, but uh, different. And also, if you're a fly fisherman and you want to go like other parts of Finland, if you go to northern Finland, it's like mainly like uh, it's very good grayling fishing. Oh, right. Yeah, it's very good grayling fishing and you can find some uh, Arctic tar as well. But brown trout fishing, it's not very, very easy or very good when you go to the north. You will find some wild brown trout, but you need uh, you need to find the right spot. You need to find the right guide, or you need to be very lucky. Yeah, I hear you. I hear you. No, it's good. Well, let's take it out of here. I had a couple of random questions for you. You mentioned the hockey at the start. So what is... And I've been watching a little bit of hockey lately because I think there's some stuff going on. Maybe it's playoffs. Is it hockey there? Is it just kind of Finland national team? Or do you have a whole series of like pro hockey teams? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the it's the only sport that uh, like a team sport in Finland where all the players at the uh, like uh, first league are the pros. They are all pros. That's why it's so popular in when it comes to the you know teenagers and youth that because they know that there's a chance to make living on. And we have a lot of players playing in Europe. We have a lot of players playing in NHL. And uh, it's uh, it's a big in Finland, for sure. Well, what's your team? Do you have one team that you follow? Yup. Yup? It's Yup. Yup is my, my hometown team. And also, I do follow a little bit Florida Panthers as well, because that's the only NHL team that I've been, you know, seeing in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> At the break. Yes. Oh, right, because you've been to, you've been to Florida. You've yeah, got a... Yeah, I think... Yeah, I, I saw a few games, and uh, I, I think I got four or five games during the years. And also, at the back, we have good Finns playing there. We have uh, Barkov and Lundell, and they're good playing there. What was your, um? The, you said you, but how do you spell that, your local team? J-Y-P. Oh, J-Y-P, okay. You yeah. Oh, yeah, there it is, yeah. That's awesome. So hockey is big. And then tell me this. This is one that um, I'm interested in because you have a, you know, a teenage daughter. My daughters, I have two daughters that are 9 and 11. And it's kind of scary because I'm like, oh, my God, they're getting harder, right, more challenging. How has that been for you? What was that like from they went from 10 to, to 16 or wherever they're at now? Has it been getting any easier or does it just get harder? Uh, more harder. Oh, man. There it is. <laughs> I have that. I have a 16-year-old and 18-year-old. Oh, you have the same age. See, we have the same kid, two years apart. So you were right on. You're just ahead of me a little bit. Yeah, it's it's uh, well, it's it's different. Now, of course, now you can sort of you can you know let them be a little bit, but you have to. You will turn from the from the parent to police. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> like, <sighs> and and also they they have a very strong will. Yep. Especially against their mother. 
Oh, you think I'm because they're daughters, of course. So I'm well. My wife always she say to me that ah, you're too you too easy for them. You are blah blah blah. They will they are you know playing with you. I'm like, well, I I just don't want to argue. <laughs> no, I'm the same way. I'm the same way. Yeah. What's your one tip for the dads out there that are going to be having teenage daughters that are 13, 14 in that range? Ah, oh, that's that's the tricky, tricky one. But I think it's to learn how to how to count to ten. Oh yeah, like relax. Yeah, and relax and don't get mad. And yeah, and uh, I try not to yell, but sometimes I yell, of course. Yeah, and I and know. also another good good uh, thing is to travel with them and do things with them and take them to places. Yeah. Not to leave them out of your life. And that's the, my main. Uh, that's it. Wow. That's great advice. That is great advice is like, take them. Yeah. Take them everywhere. That's such good stuff. Nice. All right. Uh, Yanni, I mean, I think um, I'm feeling good here. Is there a fly shop locally anywhere? And like, where's the closest fly shop to you? Uh, I think uh, half a mile from my house. It's called Perho Kalastus. Okay. Yeah. So we could look up, find some shops too, as well as some is out there. And yeah, yeah, we have shops. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have like I was at the Keys like this past trip. It's like I saw like maybe twenty independent fishing stores, like fishing tackle stores. So, oh right, not quite like that. Not like that. It's like uh, and all the big stores are getting bigger and small ones are getting smaller. But I think that's everywhere. Same thing. Yeah, gotcha. And and Rapala, you mentioned that you're uh, doing some work. You've been working for Rapala, the actual like the lure company, right? I'm not even sure. I haven't kept up with Rapala. But they're pretty big, right? What do you what do you do? Just quickly give us a little rundown on what you do with them. Uh, not doing anything anymore. But I, I used to be a salesman. I was a salesman. I I also did some marketing for them, of course. But I was the I was doing the sales in Finland. Plus, I was doing the, like eight years. I was distributing the chilumis and hats here in Finland. And uh, about a year ago, I did still like a Winston fly rods. Yeah. I did like two, three years Winston fly rods as well. Yeah. Are there some tra- are there some rods um, in Finland? Does Finland have a few different, um, you know, some companies around there too? I think in Finland we have the Vision. Oh, Vision. Yeah, yeah, Vision. Right. They're huge. Yeah. They are, I think they are one of the biggest in Europe at the moment. So they are they are doing very well. I think they are like in Scandinavia. They are bigger than anyone in, in Sweden, Norway, Finland. And they were big. Germany as well when I was at the fly so vision of fly fishing that's uh that's our thing they don't produce those stuff much in Finland but they are they are like creating everything in here and they are really uh, like uh they are doing very good and they are very skillful guys there and, and good company I would say perfect perfect yeah well, this has been good. I think we'll we'll uh, probably uh, save everything else till the next one. Um, we chat again. Yeah. Uh, we'll send everybody we mentioned before. Um, Kapankoski.com. I'll put a link in the show notes to that so people can connect with you. And uh, yeah, Yanni, I mean, this has been uh, this has been fun. Uh, you know, I think this has been really. I always love these conversations because it's one of those places that you know I want to get to, and it's just um, it's great to hear to have you shed light and let us all under, get a feel for Finland. So thanks for coming on today. Thank you. And I must say about the Kapengoski that when you go to the Kapengoski.com, it's that's only one spot with fishing. Oh, right. The best part, we have like seasonal spots and they are all different. They are all different. So, but um, I will tell more if somebody will email me. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think, I think we're just kind of getting the start. So this would be like, hey, I have a better feel for it a little bit today, right? So I think the next step is if somebody's really interested, they can call you and say, hey, I want to check this out. Where should we go? So maybe it's not the Kopinkoski, but maybe it's one of the other ones. You know, or maybe it's just yeah. somewhere in Scandinavia, you know, and you're a connection to some people to get. Yeah. 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 You should go to Sweden and Finland on the same trip. Exactly. No problem. That's what I think we'll do. Yeah. We'll take the, we'll get the family and we'll just kind of travel, stop by here. And then maybe we'll drive a crossover and, and meet John Bond over on in Norway. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That sort of thing. Cool. All right. Good stuff. Well, uh, thanks again. And we will uh, talk to you soon. Okay. Yes. Till next time. There it is wetflyswing.com slash 462 462 check it out right now if you get a chance get all the follow-up right now and uh and also right now if you head over to instagram at wetflyswing follow us there and you can submit your next question for our next guest there should be a post right up there if you go to wetflyswing.com slash qa 
and that'll drop you in there and you can see who that next guest is and leave a question and we uh, will answer that question on the podcast. Quick listener shout out before we get out of here. John out. John said, hi, Dave. Great giveaway and podcast. I live in BC, Vancouver Island, Canada, and my favorite fish is steelhead. Spent many hours chasing them on the Cowichan River, which uh, we've heard about before here over the winter. He said he spent a few trips up to the Skeena country, and those were amazing trips. And then he said, um, Brian is amazing with his knowledge of different runs and timing on the podcast. Appreciate the in-depth content. Thanks, John. There you go. Thanks, John, for checking in and letting me know you've been enjoying the podcast and the uh, the skiing episodes were good. I'm glad uh, you're getting some take. Yes, Brian, Niska has the skills. He definitely loves to go deep, and we love it when he comes on the podcast, uh, and that's great. If you get a chance, uh, take a moment and support this podcast by supporting our sponsors. You can head over right now, webflyswing.com slash sponsors. And, uh, and just click there and uh, check in on their websites, click through. And if you see something you need, would love if you had a chance to make a purchase there. That supports this podcast and keeps us going strong. All right. I'm not going to check in on where we're heading next. You're just going to have to press play. If it's, uh, if it's in the future, you just let it roll. You just let it roll, roll, roll along. And, uh, and it will play right into that next episode. If this is live, if this is uh, the week of this episode, then you'll have to wait um, about 24 hours and you'll be there. All right, uh, let's leave it short. Let's leave it sweet and let's bust on out of here. Uh, how are things going with you? I am in a, uh, I'm right now in a beer break. I'm taking a break from beer. This is something uh, that uh, we should all be doing, right? We all enjoy some of those things, but uh, right now I'm on a beer break, so I've been enjoying my kombucha. I'm gonna go crack open one right now. And enjoy that as I get ready for the next episode and, uh, and just keep this rolling along. All right, it's sunny and blue skies here. I hope in your neck of the woods, it's great. I hope you have a chance to connect with me online if you get a chance or on the river. One of these upcoming trips, we're going to be traveling around North America uh, this year and beyond. So if you get a chance, you can check in with me anytime. Dave at wetflyswing.com. And I hope you are having a great afternoon, great evening, or great morning, wherever you are in the world. And I appreciate you for stopping in today to check out the show. Thanks for listening to the Wet Fly Swing Fly Fishing Show. For notes and links from this episode, visit wetflyswing.com.